protein synthesis, but nutritional intervention as well can augment that process over and above. So the key thing to understand is that under eating or allowing yourself to go hypocaloric will actually induce a catabolic state. And by catabolic state, I mean that your muscle can actually begin to can cannibalize itself and use its own protein for fuel. So that's something that we certainly want to avoid. And I know you can all agree with that. So in terms of being able to use nu nutri uh, nutritional intervention, meaning feeding, or the involvement of uh, nu nutritional supplements, and of course, here at Isatori, we have a, a wonderful blend in which we can act, which we can do that with each smart whey protein, each smart bars, BioGrow, in, in, in order to amplify that process. And so, in being able to perhaps time nutritional intervention around your resistance exercise, you're going to find yourself being able to actually augment that pro, that process over and above what you, you you normally would be able to do. So, the key players. Well, overall, the key players in being able to do this, nutritionally speaking, are all are all of macronutrients, fast carbohydrates, and protein. Anything that that that, that carry a, a caloric yield with it. But specifically, we're going to talk about carbohydrates and protein because we know the direct role they have on the processes within muscle cells in which to upregulate muscle protein synthesis. So that being said, is that carbohydrate and protein we call them anabolic triggers meaning that these two macronutrients can actually trigger the, uh, the activation of muscle protein synthesis. Now, when we talk about protein, let me say this, is that the issue with protein relative to muscle protein synthesis, dietary protein, is not so much the protein per se, but it's the amino acids that contain in the protein that are the specific anabolic triggers for muscle protein synthesis. Specific with the amino acids are going to be the essential amino acids, but even more specific than that, they're going to be the branched chain amino acids, mainly leucine. Leucine, isoleucine, and valine are the three branched chain amino acids, and leucine is the primary anabolic trigger. And so when we ingest when we ingest dietary protein, the body will digest that protein into smaller protein fragments, and then from that it, it, it will then fight, further hydrolyze those into individual amino acids. Those amino acids are going to be taken up into muscle, and the muscle will be able to use those to commit to commit them to the process of, of protein synthesis when in fact that, that the process is needed. Now I just said needed. The issue here is, is that in muscle, muscle is, is turning over protein all, all the time. On a 24-hour basis, muscle is synthesizing protein to be able to replace the protein that, it, that has broken down over the course of the day. So this being said, is this is a constant ongoing process. What we want to avoid is to keep ourselves out of that so-called catabolic state meaning that we are in a, we're in a, a protein void within the cell, or an amino acid void within the cell, so that we don't have adequate amounts of amino acids available to be able to commit those to the process of, of synthesizing new protein, okay? So, when we talk about this issue of, of protein synthesis versus degradation, we always want to be positive. So we want to make sure that we are synthesizing more protein than we're breaking down. If we do that, and we're doing that on an ongoing basis, that means that we're going to accumulate or accrue an excess of protein over the course of time, and that contributes to muscle, pro uh, muscle hypertrophy or the enlargement of muscle. So muscle catabolism is what we want to avoid. And there are a number of reasons for muscle catabolism. The number one and probably most primary one is under eating. You have to feed the machine. And that being said, you have to ensure that you're always supplying your body with ample amounts of, of calories. Right? It's an overall caloric load. Don't allow yourself to go hypocaloric. Okay? So the net result of synthesis versus degradation is what we consider to be the accretion of new protein. And as I just said a few minutes ago, let me reiterate, 
through the course of the day, 24 hours, our body, our muscles are breaking down protein. So our bodies will also be synthesizing protein to, to, to replace that. We need to ensure that we have, have adequate, adequate amounts of protein available to do that. The process of muscle protein synthesis very, very, very quickly is that amino acids are taken up in the muscle and when, it, and, and when that occurs, then they have the ability to activate various, various proteins within what we call signaling pathways in the muscle that are going to result in the production and the synthesis of new protein. Those can also be assisted with, with uh, insulin, which is going to be released um, commensurate with carbohydrate intake as well. So a meal that contains both carbohydrate and, and protein will give us um, an activating response for, mu for muscle protein synthesis, as does simply carbohydrate, as does simply protein. But we certainly know that the, uh, the effect the protein has, specifically in the absence of carbohydrate, can have a ro robust effect on muscle protein synthesis. Um, now, relative to nutrient timing, very quickly, these are some issues that come up from time to time. Um, very important relative to what many times you might read uh, on, different, on various blogs and in various articles, this itch, issue of nutrient timing. Do I eat before, during, or after, or all of the above? Well, we're beginning to find that nutrient timing is important, yes, but we're beginning to find that it, that it may not be as critically as, as important as what, we, as what we once thought it was. Now, bear in mind, after a, heavy, after a heavy workout, you need to begin to attempt to replace protein and perhaps carbohydrate that was spent during the, during the exercise period. And you need to try to start supplying that within the first hour or so. The fact of the matter is, is, is that if you don't necessarily supply that pre, during, or post, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you're still not going to generate an appropriate anabolic growth-promoting response it, it simply means that you might be able to optimize that response more so than you otherwise would. Usually the question comes up is how much protein, for instance. Well, the answer is still the same, and Mark Lobeliner talked about this earlier today in his talk. And for most of us, the, the inadequate protein intake is about one to one and a half grams per pound of body weight, all right? So in that particular case, and many times another question comes up, is that is is that how much protein per meal or each time I ingest protein, how much should that be? I tried to there's not a more there's than not than a, a clear cut answer there, but in most cases it seems to be at least 20 grams, and really no more than 40 grams, depending on the individual. Somebody who's very large, very muscular would probably require something around 30 grams, whereas someone that was much much smaller, for instance, or perhaps female, might 15 grams, 15 to 20 grams might be appropriate. A key study that was done about two years ago showed that there was no difference between 20 grams of protein versus 40 grams of protein post-workout in stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So what that says is that 40 grams of protein, relatively speaking, really isn't any, any better than 20 grams. So save yourself some money and save yourself some protein by not ingesting extremely high amounts of protein each workout in general, all right? So just to summarize some key points real, really quickly, that is basically just the issue one that with resistance exercise will stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So that means that we need to be able to attempt to augment that protein synthesis and make sure that there's enough substrate available in terms of macronutrients from the standpoint, standpoint of both protein or, and or carbohydrate. Understand that carbohydrate is very important in also stimulating muscle protein synthesis because the insulin that's released from the pancreas when we consume carbohydrate will bind to its receptor in muscle and will activate a similar pathway in muscle that uh, produces muscle that, pro that produces protein synthesis as 
some of the various amino acids do. So protein, play, I mean, carbohydrate plays a very important role as well. So just because you think, well, I should be consuming low carb, low carb, low carb, carbohydrates are bad, that's not true, okay? Sometimes, in summarizing, many times a question comes up. Do I need to have protein? Carbohydrate with my protein post-workout. Most of the data suggests that really there's no difference between the two. Both will provide an ample and robust response in elevating protein synthesis post-exercise. So if you're on a low-carb diet or perhaps you're dieting for a competition and you want, and you want to mod moderate your carbohydrate intake, then you can cut it out of your post-workout meals and still not suffer relative to the protein synthesis that you're able to upregulate. All right? Okay. Um, I'm done. I, I appreciate your, um, your 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 attentiveness, your patience. Um, any time for a couple of questions, real quick. If anybody has any questions, I'll do my absolute best to address them. Can you explain the difference between branched chain and essential amino acids and protein? Yeah, I was asked to, uh, I, I was asked to um, reiterate the difference between branched chain amino acids and essential amino acids. In terms of amino acids, we have we categorize them as either essential or non-essential. Essential amino acids are the ones that our bodies can't make themselves and we have to rely on our diet. Of the, of the essential amino acids, of which in adult humans are nine, of the essential amino acids, three of those are called branched chain amino acids. Leucine, isoleucine, and valine. These amino acids seem to be the ones that are most prominently involved in inducing protein synthesis. And of those three, leucine seems to be the overall primary trigger Isoleucine to a smaller extent, but leucine seems to be the most prominent primary trigger for inducing protein synthesis. Right. So that being the case, is that when you're taking when you're taking amino acids, you want to make sure that they have a bevy of branch chain amino acids in them, which most of them do. All of our, all of our isotory products are chock full of branch chain amino acids, so obviously that shouldn't be a problem. Um, that's a good question. Yes, what's the difference between whey protein and casein protein, specifically post-workout? Casein we refer to as a slow protein. It's a slow absorbing protein as opposed to whey, which is what we call a fast protein. Casein a 20 to 25 gram bolus of casein will actually um, will peak in the blood in terms of the amino acid levels that it contains in about three to four hours and in about six to seven hours it's cleared okay so it, it takes a fairly long time to be able to to optimize amino acid levels in the blood and to be cleared particularly by muscle whey protein is one to two hours it peaks and then it's gone. So within about three hours, your your the equivalent bolus of whey is clear. So in this particular case, for instance, a pre-workout, post-workout whey would be better because it is going to be taken up in the muscles much quicker. Many times people think that that means that whey is better than casein. That's not true. If you were to look, uh, if you were to, to standardize the overall protein synthesis. Uh, causing results of whey and casein, they're both the same. The issue here is in terms of timing. Whey is assimilated much quicker, right? So, and in the case of a product like BioGrow, which contains also contains essential amino acids and branch chain amino acids and key bioactive peptides contained in bovine colostrum, it is cleared extremely rapidly based on the very, very, very small um, size of the pept of the bioactive peptides involved. So it's it's a it's a perfect 
adjunct or addition to say your waist shake or your pre or post workout to give you that extra jump start relative to the uh, effects that it can have on protein synthesis.